Consensus. How do you drive consensus? When do you challenge it? How do you make decisions based on consensus or regardless of consensus? As a leader, you have to be able to drive consensus, to change consensus, to improve consensus, but also to disregard consensus at times because consensus will make people engaged that will allow people to have a common goal shared unified purpose direction however when decisions that are made to arrive at a consensus are based on power favoritism political capital social capital rather than facts evidence experiences precedents that's when that consensus becomes meaningless that consensus gives rise to conflict and when conflict goes unresolved in a so-called consensus it will resurface so the question of consensus really is related to the question of decision making how valuable and how relevant the consensus really is to driving collaboration on a team engagement is dependent on how valuable the decision making system or process is to arrive at that consensus if one person, just one person out of 50 on your team is avidly challenging the consensus or is upset about something, a decision that was made, provides evidence, provides facts, precedents, but the consensus is already reached or the overall popular majority sentiment is let's not challenge the consensus let's not enter into a dialogue let's not enter into a negotiation that one opinion is worthy enough regardless of how small it may be or it may seem to be addressed to be addressed so that people that make up the part of the consensus are able to follow one direction, give each other the benefit of the doubt, and collaborate. Because when consensus is reached without a dialogue, without a negotiation or debate or friction of ideas, you get friction of people. You get people behaving out of character. And character is a spectrum. It's a colorful spectrum. Different parts of which you express in different situations, in different environments. Those people who develop a strong character over time, they have principles which are shades, strong and bold shades of these colors from the different aspects of their character which allow them to support other people to lift others which allow them to stand up for a purpose for themselves but also stand up for others defend others even when they're not making up the consensus or the popular vote because without those colors of the spectrum without those bold shades you cannot see beyond boxes. You cannot see beyond lines, beyond borders. So, as a strong leader, as a strong contributor, challenge the consensus, but present evidence for your opinion. As a strong leader, you have to make sure that Every one of your 
employees is engaged and is contributing to the same route, direction that you have chosen for this time, for this quarter, for this year. But if you do not challenge the consensus because of favoritism, because of comfort, you will not get collaboration, you will not get engagement, you will not get innovation from your team. And you will not get growth, you will not get productivity. Favoritism, political capital, making decisions based on power, takes comfort and habit, not character. Taking sides requires some courage. Knowing why requires strategy. But taking the side that benefits more people on the team that you've analyzed takes leadership, takes true leadership. Because in 2020, the two hot topics, the two most trending topics in 2020 are employee engagement and flexible work environments. People are not as engaged in work because of the leadership, because a lot of companies are growing fast. There are many more opportunities these days and they just want to make it big and they want to make it big quickly. They don't invest in their own people. So we're cutting the time of our meetings shorter. We're trying to build consensus that may be meaningless or that may not be relevant or valuable in the short limited amount of time that we have given the social media that we have and all the other distractions out there but are we being efficient with how we're making decisions that's what I want to challenge you when you build consensus when you modify consensus when you challenge consensus when you make your decisions on your team as a contributor, as a leader, there are three parts to the all-out coach collaboration model. Number one, the basic level is I can work with this individual, meaning I can develop a dialogue, an exchange, a free flow of exchange of information. Most of the people are able to do that at work, in life. There are few exceptions with whom you just can't. The second layer is, I can learn from this person. If you don't have a dialogue, most likely you'll never even know what you can learn. But you can learn from anyone in this world. Regardless of the title that you have, regardless of the comfort that you have, or the background that you have. If you are a very reflective person, you can observe others from a distance and still learn, even if you don't have a dialogue, but not everybody's able to observe very well. People who are coaches usually observe, they're perceptive. There are people that you can learn from with whom you just don't have a dialogue. There are people who are very skilled, very experienced, with whom you just may not be able to get a dot and that's a missed opportunity and number three on the highest level the peak of the pyramid the collaboration py pyramid at all our coaches i can share emotions with this individual i can share emotions with people i work with because if you are able to share emotions you can reach other people on a different level you can work with them, you can have a dialogue with them, you can make mistakes but still have a dialogue with them. You can learn from them, teach them, mentor them, coach them, be coached. And most importantly, because you share your emotions with them freely, you're going to be engaged in your job. You're going to love what you do. 
even if you're not cut out for it, even if it's not your cup of tea or you're not the most skilled at it. But most importantly, once you share emotions with others at work, you can actually be innovative. You can bring new ideas to life. Collaboration is key in reaching consensus. But reach consensus that matters, that's valuable, that's relevant. Reach it in a timely manner, but challenge it from time to time. Ask questions why that consensus was reached. How you made that decision to arrive at that consensus. Because how you make decisions is going to guide how much value you get from your employees. To what level are they engaged? Reach consensus that matters, not consensus that is comfortable. Have a great day.